In this video, I'm going to dissect just an element of working with source sets when you're defining alternatives for responsive display of images in different browsing environments. And uh, this is, it's complicated. So I'm gonna break this down in, in some detail and we're gonna walk through it kind of slowly. This code, which I provided in class, is very basic uh, as far as using source sets go, uh, but it's complicated enough for us to get a good feel for how this whole thing works. So I'm not gonna try and replicate the kind of resources you can get at w3schools.com and so on. I'm going to approach this from the perspective of looking at a real world example. I have a set of images, a bunch of them. Uh, let me show you them in my um, file manager. And they are different colors and different numbers. And the values next to each number is the width of that image in pixels. So essentially what I've done is I've collected a very wide range of the same image uh, that I want to display in different environments and I want to do it optimally. If someone is in, okay, thank you for the ad uh, um, and whatever. Uh, anyway, we'll ignore that ad from Apple to get me to buy more storage space. Um, no charge for that product placement, Apple. So here's a low res, uh, 400 pixel wide image. And as you can see, it's not really an image, it's a placeholder, but it's an image technically and it provides everything I need to um, preview this. Let me go back and now look at the most high res version of this. Same image and uh, I'll open that. This image is much more high resolution and uh, thank you once again, Apple, for the hardcore sales pitch to buy more of your products, but I'm gonna pass for now. Sorry, I'm making a video. Um, so here's the high res version and just because it's 2400 pixels wide doesn't mean it's going to be six times bigger in an iPhone. It means that with that higher resolution in an iPhone, it's going to be a lot better quality image. Um, and at the same time, in a large viewport, it's going to be a more appropriate image. So I just identified the two different things that we're working with here. One is we are identifying viewport size and displaying an image differently depending on the viewport. So this sizes line in my code does not tell a browser which image to display. All it does is tell the browser how wide to display the image. And essentially what I'm saying is, if someone's looking at this in a phone, 480 pixels or smaller viewport, make the image fill the whole screen. Images don't look good filling up half the width of a screen in a phone. However, if someone is looking at my page in a tablet or anything over 480 pixels, so a big screen TV, a, a laptop, a desktop monitor, in that event, I want the image displayed at half the page width. Um, so that's, again, that sizes line in the code is only addressing how wide the image should be displayed. It doesn't address which image to display. That's handled in the next line of code. The source set parameter for the image tag identifies what image to pair with what different um, browsing viewport. So if I'm in a really low budget phone with a smaller than 400 pixel wide viewport, I'm going to display that kind of grainy, it was grainy on this video, but it won't look grainy in a small phone, that 400 pixel wide yellow image. If the, browser, if the browsing environment has more than 800 or up to 800 pixels, but more than 400 pixels uh, wide, 
then a higher quality image, a larger image, but a higher quality image will display all the way up to, if a browsing environment is 2400 pixels wide, which is even with a high, the highest resolution phone, they're not going to see this image. This is going to be reserved for high definition uh, laptops, desktops, and other wide screens. But we're providing one, two, three, four different images depending on the browser's um, the browser's pixel viewport, which is going to be a combination of the physical size of the browser and its resolution. So I think it'll be helpful now to preview some of these options and see how they work. So let's go into Firefox. I kind of like Firefox's um, mobile preview because uh, web developer responsive design mode. I kind of like it because it's uh, product neutral. You know, uh, Chrome is going to be probably tilted towards properly displaying Android um, previews and Safari, Apple's browser, is going to be more attuned to Apple products and Firefox doesn't have a, a sugar daddy like either of those. So here we are, and I, I want to note, by the way, that um, in addition to the presets in any of these browsers' um, responsive modes, you can define your own, and I defined a low-budget Android. Uh, let me show you the definition I created for it, if I can find it here. Here we go. It's a, a 320 pixel wide screen, and it's a device pixel ratio or DPR of one. Um, the most upscale phones are a three, mediums are a two, and low budgets are a one. But I wanted to have that just in case um, th that audience was an important part of who I'm trying to reach with my set of images. So with that setting, I'm seeing the 400 pixel wide image that is the least, the smallest file size, the lowest amount of pixels, and it's taking the whole screen. Now, if I flip that screen, I'm still getting the 400 uh, pixel wide image because I'm still in a low resolution device, but it's only taking half the browser width, which is what I would was hoping. Let's take a look at the same um, at the same image now, or rather the same source set of images displayed in an iPhone 5. Now that's an earlier generation iPhone. It's only a DPR pixel uh, pixel ratio of uh, device pixel ratio of two, as opposed to the cutting edge ones that are three. So it's just it's displaying, the browser is downloading and displaying the 800 pixel wide image. And once again, if I get a wider viewport, note now my viewport's over 480, I'm seeing that image um, taking up only half the screen. Finally, let's imagine that I strike it rich and come up with enough money to get the latest uh, iPhone and iPhone 10 XS. Um, now I'm seeing the 1600 pixel wide image because I've got a DPR of three and there's, to put it one way, uh, I'm getting my money's worth out of asking users to download a higher resolution image because their device uh, can support that quality wise. And finally, if we get completely out of looking at this in a browser, um, or rather in a mobile browser, my laptop doesn't, have, it's a, it's a, I spent a lot of money on it, but it doesn't have the um, viewport to display uh, the 2400 pixel wide image. That would only be the case if I had an even higher res, even larger 
viewport, but this is the one that's supported by my browser and the image is taking up half the width of the screen as it should and displaying the image that I wanted. So I hope that kind of connects the code here. Now, uh, I really want to emphasize, it actually took me a long time to set this all up. Okay, not that long, but I did have to create a very distinct set of images. Um, and then I had to kind of think through how many different viewports I was going to suggest, really just two. Um, and I kind of walked through and, and thought aloud with you guys about how I looked at deciding what viewport, where to make the breakpoint, and both the breakpoint in terms of the viewport width and the breakpoint in terms of the resolution, the number of pixels uh, that would display in the viewport, which is not the same as the viewport size. So I hope that was helpful. Oh, hey, you know, one last tip. I want to emphasize that both for preview purposes and to get an accurate presentation, you're going to want to have that uh, viewport meta tag so that you're forcing whatever preview, whatever device uh, is displaying your image to scale it exactly as you have defined it in your code.